Welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. I'm currently running Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, and my other flight sims on an Intel CPU. It's an 8th generation i7-8700K. But recently, it started to run hot, often tipping the scales at about 100 degrees C, whereas normally under full load, I would expect something between 80 and 85 degrees max. This is an indication perhaps that my overclocking of the CPU over the last three and a half to four years that I've had this PC is starting to come home to roost. It's therefore time for me to consider replacing my PC or at very least looking at a new motherboard and CPU. I've subsequently placed my order and I'm going to have to wait six to eight weeks, perhaps maybe even a little bit longer for my new build. But I'm okay with that because I went through an established and well-respected source. I'm not prepared to get a quicker delivery, but at a huge price premium, which is what's happening in the market at the moment. I'm just not prepared to support that type of activity. What was I looking for? Well, I was looking for something fairly top end because I want an element of future proofing. I expect my PC to last me a minimum of three to four years. And in addition, being a content creator, video editing and rendering is fairly hard on the system. So I need something with quite a bit of grunt as well. The focus of this video is very much on the heart of the PC, the CPU or central processing unit, and what factors influenced my decision. And I'm not going to be covering every technical aspect of every CPU as that's beyond the scope of this video and quite frankly unnecessary. You would think that making a choice would be fairly straightforward and easy to do, but that's not the case. Intel have just released their 11th gen series of processors, the 11900K, 700, 600 and so on. In addition, AMD have come out with their 5000 series of Ryzen chips, which are giving Intel very much a run for their money for the first time in many, many years indeed. So let's get started. This is approximately how the top end processors for both AMD and Intel stack up. I'm not going to quote too many prices because they're so volatile at the moment. At the mid range, we've got the Ryzen 5 5600X competing against Intel's i5 11600K, the K meaning it can be overclocked. Both featuring 6 cores and 12 threads, with the Intel i5 being marginally cheaper. Next up is the Ryzen 7 5800X, which is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. Competing against that is Intel's i7 11700K, also 8-core, 16-threads. Without getting bogged down into too much detail here, the clear winner is the Ryzen 7 5800X, outperforming the 11700K in almost all aspects. The Ryzen may be a few dollars more, and it's only a few dollars, but it's worth it. At the top end and of most interest to me is the Ryzen 9 5900X 12 cores and above that they also have a Ryzen 9 5950X featuring 16 cores. And from the blue team we've got Intel's i9 11900K. It's an 8 core 16 thread CPU. Bear in mind that Intel's 10th gen, the 10900K, had 10 cores and 20 threads. Let's just take a moment to compare the old gen with the new gen Intel CPUs. 
This is the first time Intel have brought out a new generation featuring less cores. On the face of it, slightly slower than the 10900K, although both feature a single core turbo of 5.3 GHz. And remember for Flight Sim, it's single core that we're most interested in as it has the biggest impact on performance. So we can't rule it out on these specs alone. However, it's even more expensive than the 10900K, which is a surprise. And this is a complete generational replacement covering all the i9s, i7s and i5s with the i3s and premium Pentiums getting just a refresh. If like me you're slightly confused by all this, to get a better understanding we need to take a look at AMD and what they're doing with their Ryzen 5000 series. The reality of the situation is that Intel have for many years dominated as they've had the fastest processors for gaming. But note I use the terminology had. AMD's innovation in their 5000 series has upset the apple cart for really the first time in over a decade. And AMD can now go head to head with Intel with more overhead for overclocking, for faster memory, resulting in a real generational improvement from AMD. But it's not just in the gaming market where the AMD Ryzen chips are challenging Intel. For sheer power and grunt, they're not lacking either, featuring their new Zen 3 architecture, which is based on the 7 nanometer process. Bear in mind, Intel are still on 14 nanometer. So AMD are offering a CPU that's faster with less power draw, faster memory, improved overclocking features, and now PCIe 4. PCIe being the expansion bus or interface to the motherboard. PCIe Express is offering faster and wider bandwidth at double the previous capacity. In addition, when the CPU is used with the AMD graphics card, it can offer improved FPS. Although in tests, performance gains have been nominal. The full range of technical specifications, of course, are available on the AMD website. I'll leave a link in the notes below. So in my opinion, and it's a view shared by others, the Intel Rocket Late 11th Gen CPUs have been introduced as a temporary stopgap reacting to the AMD 5000 series introduction. Intel planning to release their 12th Gen towards the end of 2021. Whilst many flight simmers are on desktops, of course, in the computer world, laptops is the bigger prize. So the top-end 11th gen has less cores. But it aims to combat this with improved IPC. It's a faster processor in terms of instructions per cycle. The onboard graphics have been souped up and it's now XE graphics, considerably faster than the older generation. Good news for laptop users. Inherently supports faster memory. And like AMD, now has PCI Express 4.0 on board. PCI 4.0 is nice to have. But the PCI bus is not the restriction at this time. Any benefit is likely only to be represented in load times. And in terms of FPS, well, it's nominal, if anything at all. This technology is still some years away from implementation. Having ascertained all this information, I then decided to pit the two Intel chips against each other. The 10th gen and the 11th gen, the 10900K versus the 11900K. The 10th gen chips are still available, but I'm not sure for how much longer. Now, I couldn't test these myself, so I looked at various reviews. I selected results that seemed fairly representative of what was being reported, and also using a configuration similar to what I intended, 32 gigs of memory and a 3090 RTX NVIDIA graphics card. For these results, a, an acknowledgement to the YouTube channel Gerald's Tech. There you will find an honest and objective assessment of various hardware performances. I'll leave links to his channel in the notes below. A summary of average performances at 1080p, the 11900K outperformed the 10900K by about 1.5%. The 1440p, as shown above, and these are percentages, well, the difference was nominal. At 4K, the average differences were much smaller, with the 10900K performing better than the 11900K by just under 1%. When you translate these differences from percentage into frames per second, well, the difference is almost nothing. 
probably in the 1 to 2 frames per second at best. Well, for me, the results for the 11th gen CPU were disappointing. No measurable difference, really. And as the 10th gen CPU has two more cores, this is a benefit to me in terms of video editing and rendering. So my decision, right or wrong, was the 10900K was a better choice for me. And it's cheaper to buy. Having chosen the 10900K, it was time to compare it against the Ryzen 5900 series. Once again, these results are from Jared's Tech. As mentioned previously, link in the notes below. This time the measurement is specifically for Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's in FPS. And there's not much to choose between them at all. The AMD chip coming out ahead at 1080p, which is not surprising as it has more cores. But the 10900 showing its metal at 1440 and 4K. To be fair, however, you'd never notice these differences in SIM. The 10900K chip is going to be around 500, 550 US dollars, and the Ryzen 5950X about 800 dollars. The other option, and priced very similar to the Intel i9 10900K, is the Ryzen 9 5900X, with its head to head performance with the 10900K just slightly slower. One thing that has been very evident, but I won't bore you with all the charts and details here, is the Ryzen 9 5900 series of chips have performed exceedingly well in tasks outside of gaming. And overall, from a pure performance point of view, the Ryzen 9 5950X would be my chip of choice. But it comes with a premium price of 300 US dollars over the 10900K. And as we've seen overall in performance, while well, there's nothing between them, they're the same. So on balance, I've decided to go for the Intel 10900K whilst it's still available. For me, it offers the best balance between performance and other tasks. In terms of my general recommendations, if you do a lot of other computing outside of flight simulation, then the Ryzen 9 5900X is the chip of choice. And if the 10900 is not available, once again it's the Ryzen 9 5900. The Ryzen 7 5800X completely dominates the i7 11700K. That's a chip to avoid. And in the mid-range, well the Ryzen 5 5600X or the i5 11600K are both adequate performers with Intel offering a small price advantage. Before I wrap up, I just wanted to mention the component and supply situation is totally crazy. There are now websites in the US and also in Europe which constantly refresh and revamp to give you an indication of when and if stock will be available. With things as they are, I think the situation unfortunately is going to last for quite some time. I normally do a video once or twice a year covering graphics cards. However, there is just zero availability at this point. So until the situation changes, there's little point in doing a review. Right now, best bang for your buck, in my personal opinion, is the RTX 3070. Mid-range graphics card with the performance of the 2080 Ti. So to round off my build, in addition to the 10900K CPU or processor, I also selected a motherboard from Asus, or Zeus, a Z590, the Maximus Hero, and 32 megabytes of fairly fast RAM running at 3200 and an RTX 3090. And I'll certainly be bringing you comparisons in performance to my current system once they're available. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Take care of yourselves, look after yourselves and bye for now.